glad you're with us tonight. It's good to be in church, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Glad you chose to come out and be back in the service tonight. Amen. And uh, trust the Lord's going to help us tonight. And uh, maybe we'll just leave here encouraged. May the Lord help us. All right. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. And uh, let's be uh, praying for our shut ins. Remember them that the Lord will help them. All right. And strengthen them. Remember Brother Dennis, a great house. Continue to pray for him. Sister Ruth Ann Keaton, it was good to see her today. And uh, I'm glad she was uh, able to come out and be here. But she really just needs it. She needs a touch from the Lord. So if you would, remember Sister Ruth Ann Keaton. That God would touch her. And it's good to see Brother Gallagher today. But let's continue to pray. The Lord gives yeah. him strength yeah. and continues to help him. And uh, then um, there was a train accident today and a young girl 15 years old was killed and uh, so if you would remember her parents if you would today all right that uh, her family and uh, one of our um, school boys uh, his name's Tanner his his grandpa was killed in a car accident and uh, so remember his family if you would as well all right and uh, praying for them. Maybe you've got a need tonight. You'd like church praise about Sister Ellis? All right. Remember Gary? Remember Wilma Brim? She's really bad. And so uh, remember she's had a really, really rough day. So remember Wilma? Yes, Sister Katie. Okay. All right, Sister Ashley. All right. All right, <clears throat> Brother Logan. Yeah. All right, Adrian. Yeah. Remember Elizabeth too, and the new baby. Be praying for them. Lord, help them, Sister Morgan. Yes. All right. Remember Sister Jarvis? Yeah. Brother Michael? Yes, Patrick? Yep. Brother Jerry? that family. Mm -hmm. All right, but Ray, grandchildren, Sister Dan. Okay. All right. All right. Let's remember the little baby. And a lot of people traveling this weekend, so pray for them. And okay. Graduation season, a lot of stuff going on, so pray. This service tonight, I'd love to see the Lord come by and help yeah. us tonight in our service. And, and, uh, Amen. Just help us, all right? Amen. Pray, pray with me tonight, church. Amen. Dear Lord, we love you, God. Thank you, God, for the privilege we have to call on you. God, the opportunity to seek your face. God, we ask you, Lord, God, that you would move for us. God, that you would work on our behalf tonight. God, I ask you, Lord Jesus, God, that you touch tonight. God, meet these needs. Touch our shut-ins, Lord. Those that's not able to be in the house of the Lord. I pray, God, that you would minister to them. And God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, God, that you would move, oh God, for Sister Ruth Ann. God, continue to help her, continue to help Brother Gallagher. God, I pray for this family that lost their girl tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would help them and give them strength, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, for those that's fighting sickness. God, I pray you'd give them healing. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help Sister Elizabeth and the little baby. I pray you'd help Clayton tonight, Lord. God, I pray that you would move for them. God, we ask it in your name, Lord Jesus. God, we ask you, Lord, God, that you would touch us. God, let the Holy Ghost move on us. Let the power of God minister to us. God, I'll give you glory. I'll give you praise, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and mercy in our life. God, we ask you to move on all these needs, Lord, and will not fail to praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands and worship him tonight? Give the Lord praise.
just touch him, I know I'd be whole. If I could just touch, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Some part of his role. I know I'd be healed. My sins all forgiven. If I could just touch him, I know I'd be whole. Worship the Lord tonight. Amen. If, if you feel like standing tonight for worship, amen. If you need to be seated, you can. But amen, let's worship the Lord, all right? Hallelujah. I'm very glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Praise God. Let's turn in the red books. Praise God. Praise God. Page 168. Excuse me, 156. Sorry about that. Sing, I am determined to hold out. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.
praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. I want to make it. Amen. I want to make sure I'm purposing every day to make it. I remember when I was in eighth grade, I had this gym teacher who was awful, which made him a gym teacher. And he, one time, we had this big field behind uh, our, our school, and he drove around it with his car to figure out how many miles running the perimeter would do. And he was in the Air Force, so he said, ah, today I'm going to make you guys run the running requirement of the Air Force women. Now, this was an all-men's gym class, so he just really wanted to humiliate us. So none, none of us were in shape except one guy, Charles Meinke. He was my best friend in eighth grade. He was from Kenya. He played soccer. The man was in, like, amazing shape. And so he's just, like, running out there. Like, it's no big deal. And all of us are, like, doing this, you know, we're, we're limping. We haven't tripped or anything, but we're limping. Uh, as we try to do this requirement, and Charles is... Man, he gets through, he gets through under the time, you know, he, he, he qualified for the Air Force women. Uh, and you know, all of us, the rest of us failed out. And it wasn't because we weren't determined, but we also weren't conditioned. You know, why we would have said, I, oh yeah, I want to finish. None of us had put in the work. None of us had did what we needed to do to make sure that our determination actually meant something. Really, we weren't determined at all because we hadn't been determined you know, every day for six months but prior to that to make sure we could finish. You know, I want to make sure, not just when someone says, do you want to go to heaven? Oh, I want to go. Are you determined to go to heaven? Oh, I'm determined to go. Are you praying and reading your Bible every day? I want to say, yes, I am, because I am determined to go. Amen? Because it, I know it's going to be worth it to make it. Amen? Praise God. Let's turn to page 133. Saying, I feel like traveling on. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.
trial. You might have endured your last hardship. Amen? Amen? Praise God, because I believe He's coming soon. Amen? He's coming soon, and praise the Lord. One day, amen, we're going to be out of here. Amen? I'm excited. I believe the Lord's coming. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. And let me tell you what, you're going to have a hard time getting to heaven before me, because I'm ready to go. How about you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to be like Lot's wife looking back and say, oh, man, I'm, I'm leaving home. I'm, I've lived in that house for 15 years. I'm leaving that house. And that truck's been a good truck. It's a good truck. It's a Ford. It's a good truck. And I mean, you know, I'm not going to be looking back, holding on to those things. Amen. Forgetting those things which are behind. Amen. Amen. Press towards the mark. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glad you're in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Quickly, just real quickly, we'll be doing work nights at camp this week. Uh, 3.30 on Tuesday and Thursday night in the evenings. And uh, starting in the kitchen on Tuesday night, getting it all uh, put together. So if you would, help us out this week. And uh, camp's just around the corner. Be honest before we know it. Uh, you know, three shakes of a dog's leg or something like that, whatever that thing is. But I mean, it's going to be here quick, all right? And uh, so let's get, we need your help and uh, in preparation. So uh, cleaning, getting things uh, in order, getting things ready. And uh, so plan on it if you would, all right? Amen. Amen. To be helping and uh, be out of the camp. And uh, if you could go out any, any day, really, uh, there's things going on, there's work to be done. So if uh, you have a weed trimmer, you can bring a weed trimmer out. And that won't hurt anybody's feelings at all. And uh, you can weed trim. If you want to uh, come out, just help out wherever you can. 
that would be a tremendous blessing. All right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're looking forward to camp, and, and uh, let's be praying and seeking the Lord for the camp and the services that the Lord will meet with us. Amen. And uh, contact from some churches that's coming for their first time, and uh, they don't know what to expect, no. and uh, they're, they're nervous about it and right. so forth and all that. But you know what? I mean, when we all get there and the Lord, the presence of the Lord comes down, yes. amen, it's amen. just a wonderful time. So, amen. We're looking forward to youth camp. Oh, amen. amen. Have the brothers come. We'll receive the offering tonight. Be a blessing to, in your giving tonight to the Lord and to the work of the Lord. Amen. Have your way tonight, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Brother Heath, ask the Lord to bless you. Thank you, Lord.
song. The kids are singing a song. Lord, we offer up this praise. And we've got Angel singing that tonight. All right? How many of you remember when Angel first came to church? I remember. You remember that? My. I know time seems to go by fast. When she came, there were so many challenges in her life. Man, when she was singing, I'm thinking, Lord, I want to thank you and I want to praise you. God, for what you're doing in Angel's life. God, that she knows who Jesus is and that she can lift up praise to the Lord. Amen. Man, I want Angel to sing it again, backed up by this wonderful kids' choir. I want you to give thanks for Angel and what God's done in Angel's life tonight. All right. Touches my heart to see angel in church singing that. Man, Lord, I offer up this praise. Amen. Man, praise God. When you know the backstory, amen, it makes a big difference, don't it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I appreciate those that went out and knocked on doors yesterday and uh, labored for the Lord. God bless you. Appreciate all your all your work that you do, all that you put in, and uh, man, uh, many of those that went out and knocked on doors on Saturday and went out and witnessed on Saturday yeah. and and tried to get people to come to church on Sunday, but if they was out there Saturday knocking on the door, yes, they were. Man, and they was in church last night. Yeah, amen. Yes, man. God bless you. God bless you. I mean, I, I know it, man. I'll tell you what, that's you're giving you your time, you're sacrificing. Amen. I believe the Lord will honor it for you, and I pray that He does. All right. So I do appreciate appreciate all of our bus workers and all that they do every weekend, every weekend. They're faithful, aren't they? Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Michael Brandon, stand testify if you would.
Oh yeah.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. What a wonderful testimony. Bus workers, that ought to encourage you. Amen. That ought to encourage you. Amen. Don't let your heart get hardened. We talked about it this morning. Don't let your heart get hard. Amen. Because of rejection and because of those that walk away from it. Amen. But man, just believe that God's going to work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, it's been such a joy to have the blues with us this week. Man, we miss them when they're gone. Amen. Brother Blue, stand and testify if you would. So good to have you guys home. We miss you when you're not here. We really do. this as a choir song
He's God. right here. Yes. I don't even know Hallelujah. what he is doing at this moment. But he's right here. And uh, we're just going to sing this chorus. And I just want you to obey the Lord. I just, you know, I don't know about you. I cannot go one day without the presence of the Lord. Not one day. If you ask me, what would be the worst thing, Sister Ruth, that would ever happen to you? What would be the very worst thing that could ever happen? Yeah. You know what I tell you? To not be able to feel the presence of God. That would have to be the most horrible, terrifying thing in the whole world. To feel like I couldn't get in His presence. with us as we say.
just a little bit. <laughs> yes, amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Turn to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17 and uh, would tonight and uh, preach to you for just a little bit. Um, really have a lot of uncertainty about tonight's message. So, um, man, you just pray for us. I'll just share what I got. That's the only thing I know to do sometimes. Just, just throw it out there and see what, you know. Amen. Let the Lord get in the middle of it, hopefully. Uh, amen. Praise God. You may walk out, but I sure hope the Lord don't walk out. Amen. If he walks out, we're all in trouble. Amen. One verse, one verse. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks ago now, maybe two, three weeks ago on a Sunday night. Um, I preached to you about not laying your sword down. Don't lay your sword down. Do you remember, do you remember that? Wow. Okay. That's wonderful. I'm so glad that both of you remembered that. And uh, but um, while I was while I was just you know reading those verses and studying about that, I came across in uh, the same you know First Samuel tells us that story of the of Eliezer and the the holding on to the the sword and his hand clave to the sword. Then you can also go to the book of First Chronicles, uh, chapter eleven, and uh, verse twelve, and you find that the same story there, just a little bit different. But it it mentions in uh, First Chronicles chapter eleven and verse twelve, it mentions the place. It's actually in verse thirteen uh, where it mentions that they were at. He was with David at Pasadamim. Okay, you may have remembered me stumbling over that word before, okay? But I begin to think about that word, pasadamine, and I, then um, if, and what, 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 what is that, you know? What is that? That just kind of jumped out to me. So if you look at um, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and you know this, this chapter. How many of you have ever heard the story of David and Goliath, right? Okay, I mean, every probably every one of us except for the ones that maybe are some of the very smallest among us have not heard of the story of David or have heard of the story of David and Goliath and that's what takes place here in in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17 and uh, so I don't want to uh, kind of bore you with the story of David and Goliath so much I really don't but uh, it's a tremendous story isn't it a wonderful story and but I just want to look at verse 1. Verse 1, chapter 17 and verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azekah in Ephesdami. See that? At Ephesdami. Same place different spelling all right same place and it's but it's Ephesus um, what or this place this place what is it yeah. and what was what is the purpose of it and when you look at the word and what the word means it means boundary of blood boundary of blood man when I read that I thought wow that's that's fascinating the boundary of blood. And from what I gathered of that it was a uh, this this location was a noted location and battleground between the people of Israel and the Philistines. This is not the only occasion 
that they met here. We also referred to the one in the book of First Chronicles, all right, where there they battled the Philistines at Ephesus, Dami, the boundary of the blood. Apparently, from what, what commentators say and scholars have said, this, this place was a battlefield area between these two forces that would come together and they had met there. And there had been so much blood loss that they had that the Philistines had called it the boundary of blood. The boundary of blood. Well, when you look at the story of David and Goliath, and you look at this story, um, you see that when it starts off, you have the people of Israel on one side, the host of the Philistines on another side. And the, the Bible says the battle is in array. Basically, they're just sitting there in a stalemate type thing. All right? Nobody's taking the initiative. Nobody is, is coming out. And uh, they said that the, the people of the Philistines, they were, of course, they were, they were uh, uh, ungodly. They were heathen. They served uh, their idols and so forth and they were superstitious and uh, they did not want to cross they did not want this this was the boundary of blood they had learned they learned there had been a lot of bloodshed right there and I think it, I think when you look at that you read the story about Goliath he steps out and he makes a challenge to the people of Israel he challenges them to send out to send out one of theirs, all right, to, to come out. And he, the Bible says he defied the armies of the living God. He defied them. He began to get out and he began to mock them and to ridicule them and saying, come on, send out, send out your fight. The battle's in array and they, they're, we're just, come on, send out somebody to fight me. The Bible tells us that when he came out, that the people of Israel, the people of Israel were fearful and they were afraid and they were, they were, they were basically hiding. You know, you know, have you ever been in a group of people and somebody says, I need a volunteer, you know, and it's kind of like, you're hiding, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like kids, it's kind of like playing dodgeball, all right? And you hide behind Angel because you know nobody wants to throw the ball at Angel. So you hide behind her, you know? That's, that's kind of what, I, I, it's kind of like the people of Israel, man, when, when he stood out, they all started hiding. They all kind of just hid behind rocks. They kind of got behind. They tried to disappear, if you would, because they were, the Bible tells us that they were afraid. They were fearful. And they were, they were, they turned to cowards. Now, listen, if they were, if they're so afraid and they're so cowardly, why did not the Philistines just charge them? I mean, they're already scared. They're already hiding. They're already afraid, right? Sounds to me like a perfect time to launch an attack upon the people of Israel. But there is, but why would they not do that? Some have said because of the boundary of the blood. There had been, they had come to this place so many times. They had been here so many times and they did not want to fight at the boundary of the blood. They did not want to fight at the boundary of the blood. Hey Amen. Do you know, uh, let's, let's be realistic. There's, there's times, hey amen, that as we as the people of God, we're not always ready to charge the gates of hell with a water pistol. All right? We're, there's times, yeah, that we're pretty fired up. And we feel like we've got the power of God. And we feel like, hey amen, that we, that we can overcome anything, anything that comes against us. But there are times 
There are times that maybe our faith just not where it needs to be. There's times that we've kind of been beat down a little bit. There's times that maybe we're struggling for something. Maybe there's times that we're just really not on the top of our game spiritually, all right? And we're not, maybe we're not really uh, ready to, to go to battle. And you, you know, but wonder why in those times in my own life, when I'm struggling, when I'm weak, when, I'm, when I feel like I'm in the battle and I feel like I'm losing, all right? And I feel like, man, I'm weary, I'm tired, I'm ready to give up. Why does Satan not just put me out of my misery? Why does Satan still not just come and just destroy me? Because you know he would like to. You know he would like to finish it off. You know he'd like to wipe us out and do away with it. And you know in your own life there's times, amen, that if you had to go to battle against the devil, amen, you would have had a real struggle. You would have had some real trouble because you weren't ready for it. You weren't spiritually up to it. You were weak. You were tired. Your faith was weak and you were down. Amen. For whatever reason. Amen. For, and it could be numerous reasons, but you were not ready to go to battle. Oh, the enemy, Satan, he likes to taunt. You know that? Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be careful tonight. My, as you can tell, my, I'm struggling with my voice tonight. And it's allergy, see, allergies like I've never had. I mean, wow. Anyway, I don't usually get them this time of year like this. But for whatever reason, here we are. All right. But, um, but you know, Satan knows. Satan knows. I mean, come on. Don't it, it seems like when we are weak, it seems like he taunts us, challenges us, right? Threatens us. Come on! Come on, you think you're spiritual? Come on, you think you're a child of God? He challenges your faith. He challenges your salvation. He challenges whether you're a child of God or not. Hey Amen. He launches it. He begins to defy God. He begins to show himself. He begins to try to make himself look powerful and big and mighty, right? Amen. Why does Satan not just come and crush us? Why does he not just come and just crush us? Hallelujah. I tell you, you know. Have you ever been done battle with the enemy before? Spiritually? You ever done battle with let me tell you, it can be it can be trying. You better you better go with the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. You better go with the power of the Holy Ghost. You need to go with an, an anointing upon your life. You need to you need man because if you're gonna go to battle with the enemy. And we've been talking about spiritual warfare in our Sunday school class. And I'm not going to reteach my class. Don't worry, all of you that's in my class, you won't have to worry about that. We're not going to reteach that. But when we were studying in the book of Job, and we read how Job offered sacrifices continually for his children, perhaps that he offered these burnt offerings. He offered offerings of atonement for his children. Amen. He wanted them to be covered by the blood. He wanted them to be protected by the blood. Just in, just in case, per chance, per chance, just in case that they had, they had sinned in their heart. Just in case they had done, he wanted to make sure, amen, that it was right. And you know what? It, it created a hedge about, I believe it was instrumental in creating the hedge around the people of, of Job's family. Because he offered those sacrifices. He worshiped God. Amen. He covered them with sacrifices and with the blood of those sacrifices. Why? Because he knew the danger. He was a godly man. He was a godly man, but he wanted to cover them. Cover them. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. For the boundary of the blood. Because I believe. I believe that Satan would love to crush us. He would love to destroy us. Amen. But I want you to know, amen, praise God, he already has lost the battle. Amen. There's been a lot of bloodshed. And it was 
the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And praise God, we won that battle. And Jesus came out victorious. Amen. And Satan knows where the boundary of the blood is. Amen. And he knows that he cannot touch you. Amen. In the hand of God. Hallelujah. In times when I probably would have been crushed. In times when I probably, my faith was weak and I wasn't able, to, wasn't able to make it. Amen. But yet, amen, because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful to be under the blood today. I'm thankful to be under the blood. I'm thankful, amen, that Jesus shed his blood. Amen. And I'm thankful to be covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. I know you've heard it said, amen, that Satan can't cross the bloodline. And I know that that, that word phrase is not in there we talked about it right brother Jonathan amen it's not in there but it is there thank God amen that the blood covers us and the blood of Jesus keeps us hallelujah so that we are not destroyed amen Satan would love to destroy you tonight Satan would love to destroy your family Satan loved to just wreak havoc in your life tonight. Amen. But I want, I'm thankful. Amen. For the boundary of the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. That as long as I stay under the blood of Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful as long as I stay. Amen. Surrender to the blood under the blood of Jesus. Amen. That I can be protected. Amen. By the hand of God. Amen. Now they're protected by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You say, Brother David, are you saying you'll never have a problem? You'll never have a problem? Oh, no, I'm not saying that. No. Will you never have a battle? No, you'll have a battle. Right. Amen. Fight. You're going to have to fight. Sure. You're going to have to fight. And say the enemy's going to come out just like the Philistines came out. And they show themselves. Right. Amen. But can I just tell you, stay in the blood. Okay. Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I know sometimes, you know, when we, we may not we may not feel like that we're ready, amen, to go out and conquer the world for Christ. Amen. But I'll tell you, even though there's times of weakness and we're, maybe we're discouraged, amen, stay under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Stay under the blood of Jesus. Don't give up. Amen. Don't surrender. Amen. Don't, don't throw in the towel yet. Amen. Stay under the blood. Amen. Can stay committed to the Lord. Amen. I believe you'll be a time, amen, that you'll rise up and God will give you the victory and that you will feel like marching on. Amen. That you will feel like picking up a stone. You will feel like slinging a sling. Amen. And you will, I feel like, having a victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Just stay in the blood. Stay in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The boundary of the blood. Praise the Lord. I... I I think it's I think it's awesome that Satan knows his limits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember the the uh, the Boggs family, Chris Boggs family. I don't know if you all know who Chris Boggs is or not. They attended our church there in Ohio for a while. They had a dog that barked all the time. He was on a chain, and you could see his boundary, where he could only go so far. And let me tell you what, he had worn a path where that chain had allowed him to go so far. And he'd get out at the end of that chain, and he barked, and he barked, and he barked, and he barked. Now, you're not going to believe this, but it's true. He barked until he lost his voice. It's the truth. And then his bark became a bark, 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 bark. It's true. He couldn't even bark anymore. He had barked until he lost his bark. Amen. I want you to know. Amen. Satan has got his boundary. Amen. The only thing that he can do is bark until he loses his bark. Amen. Don't pay attention to it. Amen. Stay under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Still stay under the blood. Amen. He's got his boundary. Hallelujah. Amen. As long as we stay. 
Amen. Under the blood. Under the blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He may bark. He may bark. It, let me tell you, a barking dog can be annoying. Right? A dog, a, a dark, a, a darking bark, bog, a darking bog. A barking dog, okay, a barking dog can be very annoying. All right? Hey, man, and it can be a, it can be a great nuisance to you. Hey, man, I've had one. All right? I've had one. I've had neighbors call me. Can you please get your dog to quit barking? And it was Nathan's dog. I still don't like that dog. All right? I still don't like that dog. And they would call, please make your dog quit barking. It's still barking. It's barking. It's barking. Amen. But a dog barking dog may be annoying. Amen. But a bark won't hurt you. Amen. I'm glad that Satan, he may bark. Amen. But praise God. Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, the day the Lord saved you. Remember, remember the children of Israel in the land of Egypt? Remember when they were, they were had to put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel? Amen, and then the death angel passed. Amen, and they called it the Passover. Hallelujah. Amen, because they were passed over. Amen. Nobody was touched. Nobody was harmed. Why? Because it couldn't get past the blood on the door. Amen. The door, that blood was, was a covering. It was a protection. Amen. And it, that was why they called it the Passover. Because the death angel passed over them. Amen. Because of the blood. Hallelujah. If, I want you to know. Amen. If you don't know Jesus today. Amen. I think what the best thing for you to do is get under the blood of Jesus. Get under the blood. Amen. If you want to save yourself and your family. Amen. Get under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Get under the blood. Amen. For those that might be foolish enough. Amen. To think that you can do this on your own. I want you to know, stay under the blood. Stay under the blood of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to have to ask you to stand tonight, if you would. Hallelujah. Man, I'm praying this afternoon about this service tonight. Amen. Just. Amen. Ask you, Lord, for direction. What to preach. Man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What to preach, but just ask the Lord, Lord, for direction. I felt like just telling somebody to die. Amen. Would you please stay under the blood? Amen. Amen. You know, when they put the blood on the doorpost and lintel, and they brought all their family into the house. That's where the protection was. You can't say, well, little Johnny's out playing in the yard. It's not good enough. You've got to be in the house. Can I tell you? Keep your family under the blood. Maybe Satan's voicing a lot of threats at you and your family. Maybe you are in what we've been talking about, a spiritual battle. Maybe you're fighting things and you're, you're dealing with them. Maybe Satan's talking in your ear. Maybe you're hearing the barking dog. I want you to stay under the blood. And let it be a boundary. Let it be the boundary of the blood that protect you. Amen. Would you bow your head with me tonight? somebody tonight to lift their hand to say Brother David pray for me and my family tonight pray for me and my family tonight
because I feel like Satan. Amen. It's coming against our family. And I want to stay under the blood. I want to stay safe under the blood. Amen. Would you just lift your hand up? God bless you. God bless you. God bless. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'll tell you what, church, the blood is powerful. The blood of Jesus is powerful. Amen. And if we would just get ourselves and keep ourselves under the blood, under the blood, hallelujah. I want you to remember Job, the Lord said you could take his, you could take his possessions. You could take his health. But he said, don't take his life. Don't take his life. Hallelujah. Tell you what. Amen. God was in complete control of all that was going on in Job's life. God was in complete control of it. And he's in complete control of Satan in your life as well. Satan's not going to go anywhere and do anything in your life it's that God, amen, does not allow him to do as long as you stay under the blood. Amen. Stay under the blood. And Warren Wearsby said it, and I'll say, I've said it the other night, I'll say it again. Amen. He's got his, he puts you in the fiery furnace, but he's got his eye on you, and he's got his hand on the thermostat, and he's not going to let it get hotter than you can take it. Amen. And if he needs to, he'll turn it back. He'll turn it back. Amen. God's aware. God's aware. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Amen. We read the verse today from the book of Job. Amen. He knows the path that I take. He knows the path that I take. And when I'm trying, I'm going to come to this goal. Amen. God is aware and God knows and God sees what's happening in your family right now. And when your family's under attack, amen, plead the blood. When you go into prayer, plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. Be, be, be vigilant. Amen. Be aggressive and say, Lord God, cover us by the blood of Jesus. God, cover us in your blood, Lord. Cover our family. Cover our children. God, cover them by the blood, Lord. Amen. Because I do believe in the boundary of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, there's those that raised their hand. Amen. I want all of us to come. Those that lifted your hand, I want you to come as well. Amen. And I want you to come and pray and intercede for your family tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just got to tell you, Satan, you can't cross oh, the yes, blood Lord. line.
just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by His blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. Oh, remember, you can't cross the bloodline even though my spirit is low and I can't hardly go but still I see victory many times I'm walking by faith I can't see what lies before me still I see victory I just gotta tell you Satan you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood you may stare and you may fight but you're gonna tonight cause remember you can't cross the bloodline I just gotta tell you Satan you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood you may stare and you may fight but you're gonna tonight because remember you can't cross the bloodline sometimes the battle gets hot and it seems that we're fighting a lot oh i remember i'm standing on the rock so satan if i were you I'd turn around and I'd give up too Cause I believe that you're about to lose I've just gotta tell you Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by his blood You may stay but you're gonna lose this battle tonight cause remember you can't cross the bloodline I just gotta tell you Satan you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood you may stay but you're gonna lose this battle tonight Cause remember You can't cross the bloodline Sometimes the battle is hot And it seems that we're fighting a lot I remember I'm standing on the so Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and I'd give up too, cause I believe that you're about to lose. I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline, because
but you're gonna lose this battle tonight cause remember you can't cross the bloodline